Hello everyone, this video will be about using Inkscape, SVG files, and embroidery wear to create graphics for embroidery. Uh, only version 2.0 and above will support this feature, so if you don't have that feature, download the trial today and see how you like it. Um, so I have Inkscape already open here, and I have a graphic on the clipboard that I can paste. And so this graphic will turn into embroidery. So the first thing we do here in Inkscape, since this is just a bitmap, we're going to go trace the bitmap with the trace feature in Inkscape. So if we turn on Live Preview, you already see what it's going to trace. And this is pretty good. It's a black and white graphic, so it's going to trace well. So we'll just choose that. So it's now traced, and you'll notice um, that there's more than one object here. Uh, one's the image, and one's the actual tracing of the vector graphics that Inkscape created using that tool. Uh, what we want to do is we want to actually take that vector graphic and we want to break it apart because we use individual uh, paths in embroidery wear. And this is multiple paths. As you can see, each of these objects could be broken up into an individual path. And they're currently grouped together in Inkscape. So you just select the object to break apart and under the path menu there's a break apart menu. Now you notice with the dotted lines each of these individual objects is now individual paths and those perfectly ready to go as far as exporting to an SVG file that embroidery work can use. So we'll just go simply file save as and I just call it a floral thing. Now that we've created our graphic, we can import it into Embroidware. So simply we just open a file in Embroidware, which I already have a file open, and then we go import SVG, and then we choose the one that we just created called Plural Thing, and it instantly comes in as running stitches. Uh, you can see that it totally imported the SVG file just fine, which is great. Um, that creates a lot of stuff you can do with this. Um, because these are closed, in this case with Inkscape, um, those features were closed, we can simply select them. And typically, this would probably end up being a fill. So we can just choose a fill and fill that object. And in just a matter of moments, we have from, from an image a embroidered object. Now, of course, we're going to have to do some more uh, functions on it as far as a section ordering things like that if we're going to use this as a fill we would do that um, another thing you could do is you could just simply turn it into you know running stitch which it already came in as when it started uh, you're going to running stitch and just have this stitch out as a running stitch now let's look at these a little closer just so you can understand what Inkscape ends up doing uh, so if we just select this, you can notice that we now have um, lots of points, very many points indeed. Uh, a little probably more complicated than you would actually design it because you probably would just make this one curve, for example. But it's automated, so uh, it's a time saver, definitely. Uh, and it can be useful that way. Um, in the new 2.0 version, we have now Beezer handles. So Beezer handles are just, we just have handles from the endpoints to uh, the control points. So you kind of can get a sense of what they do. I w it wasn't very clear when I just didn't have handles. Basically, a Beezer point, you can see that it's parallel, well, not parallel, it's tangent to the, the control line here. So this curve is tangent to that. So what you can do with that, now you notice in a lot of these things, Inkscape decided that these would be tangent to each other. This curve is tangent to that curve, and you can see that the lines are in line with each other. I plan to, in a, hopefully in a future version, to make this a feature in Embroidery Wear as well. But now for 2.0 version, uh, you can just line them up by eye, and you'll be close enough to be tangent. And... Yes, so, so Inkscape can output lines. You can see that's a line there, here. And it can output curves. And basically, that's the two features that are compatible with Embroidery Wear because Embroidery Wear uses lines and curves. Uh, so, 
anything that you create in Inkscape, you're going to want to generate into lines and curves. And they're called paths in the SVG files. Uh, they have other definitions for uh, circles and things like that. And we are only compatible with paths because that's the only analog that we have in Embroiderware. So I will probably talk more next about um, how to use Inkscape in different ways to make sure that you have paths and lines or you have paths that are curves and lines. Okay, let's start using Inkscape and go through some basic features just to show you how you can import things into Embroiderware. So we'll start with the Beezer Curves and Straight Lines tool. And we'll just create some lines. And then we'll go modify the nodes so that we can create some curves. I know you can do this while you're drawing it, but I'm just um, showing you. I created two curves there, and I'll create another curve here another curve here. So we have lines and curves. So we're just going to save that over the graphic we already did for the floral thing. And then we're going to go into Embroiderware and import it. So you can see now we have the same exact graphic with the same items determined to be curves and the same items to be determined lines. So you can see that in this case this is a line and the other one is a curve. Now what's important about Embroiderware is that things ultimately end up being saved as paths. I've opened the XML editor that kind of gives us a little indication of what's going on. Um, you don't really need to use this, but I use it just to kind of understand. Um, so let's say we're gonna draw a spiral. Now you notice that right now in the spiral we have uh, transform it. We have all these different things relating to a spiral, which these things really uh, I don't use at all um, at this current point. So if you do Control Shift C, you can turn it into paths, and you notice that everything goes away as far as all those details of the spiral. Unfortunately, though, for Inkscape purposes, this is now divided up into a bunch of curves, which is fine for what we want to do in Embroiderware because when we save this off and we go into Embroiderware, it will already be paths, which is what we need. Uh, so if we import that, now we have the spiral in Embroiderware, the same spiral, because it was converted into a path. So Inkscape has some complicated types that uh, basically aren't paths and lines, so they really aren't compatible with Embroiderware in their form, but you can convert them obviously in Inkscape itself to whatever you want. So uh, you can take a complicated object and you can convert it into something else. So in this case, let's say we're going to do a star. Now in the same case, a star is also a complicated object. You see that it has all these new features here. So in order to actually make the star compatible with Embroiderware, we would have to do Control, Shift Control C and turn it into paths. You notice that all these other features go away. Uh, we can go and save it and we can bring it into Embroiderware. So the key to remember is that you want things to be paths. Uh, that is key so that they can be imported. So there's other things in Inkscape that are also interesting. Uh, there's strokes and other types of graphic types that um, have other features. So you have text, but in the case we have strokes here, we have a stroke here. Now this is a stroke and it looks like it's passed already. I'm not sure here. But it doesn't hurt to say Control, Shift, Control, C, turn it into pass, and save that off as that. And go back in Embroiderware. Let's see if we can import this without any problems. So we can. So uh, pretty much you can do a lot of things with Inkscape um, from a graphic standpoint that you probably will want to use. So it really extends the capabilities of Embroiderware.